Now, this is a video that's going to make a lot of you mad. It made me mad when I took a look at the actual topic and I read the article that this comes from, but because this is a YouTube channel where I talk about stuff that I think is engaging to the point where we can actually have a discussion about it and actually get some thoughts out there, we're making a video about this because first off it was noted by somebody who is prominent in the hockey media world as well as it does involve some very... Ooh, it's some very big ideas over here, so... Ah, oh man. Let's get into it. Let's talk about Patrick Kane to the Habs, and from the way I'm speaking about it, you kind of know my stance on this already. So, there was a radio hit done earlier this week. It was done over by George LaRock, who is indeed a former National Hockey League player. Some of you may remember him from his days as an Edmonton Oiler, as well as, of course, his days with the Montreal Canadiens towards the end of his career. But... Earlier on the week, he mentioned on his radio show that the Canadians could give up some of their key prospects to land Patrick Kane. LaRock believes the Canadians could offer up Jesperi Kotkaniemi, Cole Caulfield, and a 2021 first for Kane, whom the Blackhawks would actually retain salary on. It's hard to imagine this trade happening. Would you like to see it happen anyways? This is from the article on GoHabsGo.com. And right off the bat, you know, this is an idea that's just brought up by some guy who has his radio show. Sure, it's a guy who indeed was a former Hab giving his insight, but at the end of the day, it is just one person's opinion. The problem is, this article was shared 202 times in the span of a few hours, and people were talking about this on Twitter nonstop. So that's kind of why I said at the beginning, even though this might not be the most valuable kind of topic out there, it certainly is one that people are talking about, and thus, hey, we follow the conversation, we bring up points that people are talking about, and we discuss ideas that are spread through you. So, talking about Cole Caulfield, Kat Kanyemi, and a first for Patrick Kane, oh my goodness, where do we even begin? I know where we'll begin. Let's talk about Patrick Kane first and foremost. So, Kane is one of the best players in the NHL. There. That's it. Probably the best stick handler in the league. Probably one of the most deceptive puck skill guys that has ever stepped into the skates on NHL ice. And he's a guy who is playing on a Chicago Blackhawks team that has just entered a rebuild. Now, we've spoken about this a few videos ago when we talked about Chicago, but they're in a spot where their core guys... Taves, Kane, Keith, and Seabrook, they were not made aware before the rebuild process began that they were going towards a rebuild process. So, there was recently an article published on The Athletic by Mark Lazarus interviewing Jonathan Taves, where he notes how, you know, his buddies and him, they're kind of upset. Give it a few more days, and all of a sudden the Blackhawks came out with a statement saying, yes, we are going to rebuild, please stay with us here, we want to keep the guys that we have, we want to remain competitive, and we're going to use that with a youthful injection going into the next few years to help us keep in the playoffs. And that's kind of where the whole Taves, Kane, Keith trade speculation came in, because if the Blackhawks are in a spot where one of these guys, who are indeed in their 30s are like, no, screw that. I don't want to play for a rebuilding team. Send me away. I want to play for a team that's able to win a cup now. I want to get my, what, fourth cup in a decade. Because even though three is cool, three's not enough. But, you know, I'm just kind of joking about that last part here. That's kind of why people are talking about whether or not Kane, Taves, and all those guys could be traded. But Patrick Kane here is the one whom... I think a lot of fans around the league, if you ask them, okay, who from the Blackhawks would you want to take the most, he would be that guy. He is, again, one of the best point producers in the entire league. Stick handlers, puck protectors, all that stuff. He is so good offensively. And so if you're a Montreal Canadiens fan taking a look at this and you're saying, darn, what could Patrick Kane do on the Habs? Man, you start thinking about that right wing core and things get pretty nasty. Patrick Kane on your first line, Gallagher on your second line. Toffoli on your third line, Anderson on your fourth line, and you still have Armia too. You're having yourselves what is probably the best right-wing core in the NHL, if you did not have that already. But of course, coming back the other way, that is the problem here. First off, Jesperi Kotkaniemi going away. Okay, if the Blackhawks are in a spot where they want themselves that huge, youthful injection that we said they probably could use in the previous video, where they go 100% in on the rebuild. If they're getting a guy like Kotkaniemi back, then my gosh, 
going into the next decade of Doc Kotkaniemi, two third overall picks whom we've actually compared before. That's going to be great. If you're losing out on Patrick Kane, then who cares? You guys are a rebuilding team anyway. You guys are going to get a better draft pick. You guys are going to get more prospects, etc. You're still getting a roster player back, and sure, Kotkaniemi is nowhere near the level of Patrick Kane is today, but still, going into the long-term future, you could say that if you want to remain competitive, you want the core of Doc, Strom, if you re-sign him, Debrinkat, all these guys, you want these guys to be as good as the Taves, Kane, Keith Blackhawks were in the 2010s, you add a Kotkaniemi there, and my gosh, that could be possible. Not to mention the Cole Caulfield over there, too. If you're a Habs fan, you know who Cole Caulfield is. 15th overall pick, 2019 NHL entry draft. One of the most undersized players taken in recent memory in these drafts, but one of the best, if not the best, goal scorers taken in these drafts in terms of his pre-draft profile. A guy who tied Ovechkin's U18 goal record. A guy who broke all the records of goal scoring in the NTDP from Matthews, Kessel, all those guys. He's a great goal scorer, but if you're trading him away for Patrick Kane. Oh boy, what you're doing is you're replacing the long-term future potential of a Cole Caulfield that is not guaranteed because he is sub six foot nine for a Patrick Kane who is indeed very, very good now, who could probably become a point per game player, 82 points, 82 games in his sleep and reach for a hundred plus points every other season, if not every season. The first round pick is also there too, so if the Canadians are in a spot where they feel like they're betting on themselves and they want to be good for 2020-2021, hey, you send over the 2021 first. If you're lucky, that 2021 first becomes 32nd overall, or 31st, or whatever, I don't know. I think it's going to be 32nd overall, right? Because Seattle's going to enter the entry draft in 2021, something weird like that. But... Obviously, there is a different perspective when it comes to betting on yourselves in those circumstances. It's a lot of pressure for teams to trade away a first-round pick of theirs that goes on for the next upcoming season, because you never know. You never know how good your team is going to be. We saw this with the San Jose Sharks. They traded away a first in 2020 to the Ottawa Senators. They got Eric Carlson back, sure, but they sucked in 2020, and they ended up drafting third overall. Wait, no, they didn't. It was Ottawa who was drafting third overall because they had the pick. So if you want to put yourself in a position where you're really willing to bet on yourselves and you're really confident that you're not going to be dead last like the San Jose Sharks were, and you will be a playoff team, and you will go deep, and you will make at least the third round, then I guess sending over your 2021 first if your Montreal does make sense. But at the end of the day, man, this is a crazy idea and one that as a Habs fan, I personally would not like to see it. I think this team is building for the future. Sure, this team got much better in the offseason and they're going to be competing now, but the best days of this team are ahead. When Kotkaniemi is 25, when Suzuki is 27, when Cole Caulfield is in his fourth season in the NHL, and when Alexander Romanov is logging 25 minutes a night, that is when this team is going to be its best. And if you're going to go all in, say, okay, screw the future. Here, Kotkaniemi Caulfield first, give us Patrick Kane, and you're going to go all in next year? Nah, sorry, I don't see it. I guess in terms of trade value, you could say that it's somewhat equal, even with that retained salary that the Chicago Blackhawks would have to do, because Patrick Kane, we know Patrick Kane, look at his contract right here, $10.5 million until 2023, that's certainly not small. So retained salary does make sense, especially since the Canadians are already so close to the cap for the next upcoming season, but again... This is a ridiculous offer. This is just a huge slice of the Canadians' future being traded for a huge slice of the Blackhawks' past and the Blackhawks' now for the sake of just talking about it. There isn't really anything to discuss here in terms of whether it would happen, but we're just talking about the idea instead because that's what's gotten everybody up in fight-or-flight mode. Because, hey, you talk about Kotkaniemi, Caulfield, all these guys, and getting traded— even if it's for Patrick Kane, I think there's a lot of love and a lot of shared love between all the Habs fans out there who are watching this video and who read the article and who have seen other people talk about this that just goes extended towards these first round Canadians prospects. I know Yasperi isn't a prospect, but Habs fans saw this guy get drafted over Zadina, who was the guy who a lot of Habs fans wanted, and then he became great, and then he became not so great, and then he became great again, and now Habs fans love that. For Caulfield, it's a small underdog story of a guy who can score at will, just defying all odds, and I think a lot of Canadians fans absolutely love that. Imagine having Caulfield and the Brink out on the same team, though. My gosh. So, 
even though it is Patrick Kane coming back, there still is a lot of giving that you're going to have to do if you want to please Habs fans with any offer involving not just Kock and Yemi, but Caulfield too. So talk to me in the comments what you think about this trade. I do hope you enjoyed this video. That's Rolls99. And bye.